Hey everyone, Dragonfire here, and after spending the better half of this week trying to make the full-on comprehensive review of MapleStory 2, um, I just started to notice that a lot of my opinions on the game itself are very swayed by the closed beta. Um, so I ended up looking over the review I wrote so far, and, um, a lot of my opinions could not be valid for when the game actually comes out. Uh, both negative feelings and positive feelings. There's a lot that could change when the game actually comes out. Uh, because of this, I don't feel comfortable um, releasing a full-on review of the game, and instead, I'd rather just talk about it, talk about the beta, um, talk about everything I experienced, and know that when I'm talking about the game, this whole thing, I'm talking about the closed beta. Now, some of you might be going, okay, well, you know, why does the closed beta matter so much? Why does it matter? It's not going to be that much different. Well, first of all, there was no pay, uh, cash shop in the game. So a lot of the things I experienced, um, I experienced for free. Um, that, you know, I don't know if it's, they're going to be free in-game. You know, um, I had basically free reign to design any piece of clothing I want. I had free reign to constantly switch up my look, free reign to make as much music as I want. Like I had, I could do anything in the game. Um, and also they did put a lot of feedback surveys out there. They've been asking for feedback like crazy ever since the beta has ended. I've gotten two surveys and I've also commented on almost every single uh, feedback um, uh, thread in the forums. Um, also, if you haven't noticed, I'm also doing a giveaway for a MapleStory 1 pack that they did uh, give me as compensation for doing surveys. Um, so if you want that, go check that out. I'll link it right here in the video so you can check that out right now. I'm actually just going to spend a little time to write down when in the video to put the annotation. There we go. All right. But plug-in plug -in gone, so let's get back into uh, the... I don't want to call it review, but just my impressions of the game. So right off the bat, I got to just talk about how fun the game is. Like, the beta was fun. I enjoyed myself. There was never a time where I really sat there and was like, you know what, I'm bored. There was never a time like that. There was basically every time they gave me something new to do, I was jumping right into it, making my own, my own music, designing my own clothes, which <laughs> harder than it looks. Um, going fishing, mining, gathering, crafting, house building. There was just so much to do in the game that I never felt myself getting bored. That being said, most of my time was spent just doing side activities, doing these, um, like just bonus uh, MMO things. You know, I wasn't really engaging in the standard MMO play. Um, and that's where I feel the game starts to lose me on is its standard MMO loop. So the way it works in the beta, there is a weekly and daily limit on your dungeons. You can do up to 10 uh, dungeons a day for a maximum of 30 a week. So, that right there is enough to 
kind of drive me away. But then they also mix in the, the limit to be both dungeons and raids. So in your raid, if you want to do your raids, you got to make sure you don't do any dungeons. And so it creates kind of a, a min-max pro problem for me, you know? Um... So if you if you, if the game didn't change at all and you you played it when it first came out, the optimum path for you to do as a player, so to get the most progression you can possibly get, you don't touch the story and you don't touch dungeons. You fish until you're level 50, and then constantly upgrading your fishing skill as you're fishing, and then once you're level 50, if you have expert or above, you want to get these bait hooks that let you fish up gear. Then you just fish up gear, that'll be epic level, and jump right into the raid. And that is literally all you do. Um, and then you just use your 30 uh, weekly uh, dungeon slash raids on the raid itself. Because that's the most profitable, that's the most uh, highest level gear you're going to get. It's just overall the, the main way you should be... Uh, min max in the game and with that in mind like that really started to drive me away because of the state the main staple mmo ness of the game um i feel is not flushed out it is not um fully designed and it's not going to be for the long it's not going to be it's not going to keep the game uh, running for a while uh that's what i'm trying to say and i can see myself getting really bored of it now as well as the, the my issue with the limit because the limit is a major issue as well with the limit issue they then design each dungeon I don't know about the raids because I ended up not doing any of the raids, but I did do um, two of the level 50 dungeons. I uh, did them uh, multiple times, um, but I only did two of the, I think there was four available. But the issue I have with the dungeons designs is they're made for solo players. They don't design them thinking you're going to go in with four people. They design them thinking you're just going to go in by yourself. So all the mechanics in the game, all of the all the mechanics in the dungeon, all the enemies, all the mob packs, everything is super simple and just damage sponges. There were two, two dungeons I can think of that did something different. Uh, there was one dungeon, I forget, I think it was Heart of Darkness, or Seed of Darkness, something like that. When it had a section where there was a bunch of mobs, you would kill the mobs, and then there were seeds you had to uh, interact with. So you interact with the seeds, they'll disappear. And you could only do about two or three if you were uh, by yourself. So you would only be able to do two or three seeds, and then more mobs to spawn. And then you'd kill the mobs, rinse and repeat until you got rid of all the seeds, and that section was done. So there was that, and then in another dungeon, there was a mob, a uh, boss, and it was a recycled boss, but they added new skills to it. And one of the skills they added was it would give itself a buff, and then aim at a player in the party, and then it would charge at them. Now, and what you would do is stand in front of a pole so that when it charges at you, it would run through you, hit the R, uh, you would dodge out of the way, and it will run through you, hit the pole, and stun itself. But those are as deep as the mechanics go. Um, even the boss I was telling you about, that mechanic was just mostly superficial because as the boss is charging up to hit you uh it's basically a mini stun anyway so you could just and he locks himself in that um that phase until you stun him 
So well, I just broke a pen. Um, so you could just ignore the mechanic completely as he's charging up, just smack him. And then once he charges across the map, uh, just walk over and start beating him again, so on and so on. And so the mechanics of the dungeons and the bosses are too simple for me. And in the end, I wish they would design them um, with a full party in mind. So instead of designing, um, instead of designing bosses to be just damage sponges that you scale up the health and damage for the more people are in your party, uh, they actually sat down to make interesting boss fights and boss arenas so that the game so it wasn't stale to run through them as well as make it uh so that running a dungeon solo isn't the easiest thing to do because as it stands in the game right now there's no point getting in a party um my girlfriend was telling me that soloing dungeons as a priest at least for her build was pretty difficult but as a berserker myself i had no difficulty in any dungeon not even the level 50 ones um, they were all pretty much a joke. And when it came to me playing on my own, when my girlfriend wasn't on, I just ran them solo because of the queue time and actually sitting there waiting to find players was a waste of time. And I could just run the dungeon about three times in the time it would take me to run it once with a party. And that is super not okay for an MMO. I do understand that in MMOs, you should be able to solo contests at some point. Uh, that was one of my biggest gripes with Final Fantasy when it didn't uh, have that feature. Uh, there was a bunch of old dungeons I just wanted to run and uh, get the item drops for. But having to find a party to do it with was just annoying. Until they finally added in the feature for me to run it solo. But that is entirely different than what MapleStory is doing. In the case of Final Fantasy, the content was out for two and a half years at that point, and I was level 70, or... I was like, not 70, 70 is new cap. Uh, I was like, you know, very strong level 50. Um, I, I, I haven't played the game in for a while, so I, I forget. Uh, what the cap actually was at 2.0. I think it was 50. So I was level 50, I was fully geared out, and you know, running Sestasha was super simple. Um, and But having to dumb my gear to score down and run it with a party was just annoying. Uh, all I wanted to do was get, you know, the, the, the tank gear where I can just start leveling up my tank easy. And that was the, that was, you know, okay. I, the, the content's been out for about two years. The uh, player base has already ex ex experienced it to its full extent. Uh, they had systems in place that would still let high-level players like me um, help lower players who just started the game out through the low-level duty finder. There was just, you know, there was a lot uh, going for it, and it was actually um, something they added in to benefit the game. Now, when it comes to MapleStory, the content's brand new, and they designed the brand new content day one to be cleared solo. And yes, you may be able to clear um, dungeons faster with a group, but if you factor in the time of uh, running the party finder until you find a full group, and factor in the time it takes to get everyone in the dungeon, uh, you're not saving that much time by running with a group. And running solo just is pretty much the optimum way to play. So that was annoying to me. And at first I thought, you know, oh, it's, this is just the beginning dungeons. This is just how it's going to be uh, starting out. You know, once we get to level 50 dungeons, that's where the games truly will shine. That's when the dungeons take it up a notch. You know, I'm, I'm used to games uh, ignoring early games. 
and just focusing on, on the late and end game. But even when I got to the 50 dungeon, it wasn't fixed. Um, the very last day of the beta, as a joke, I, queued, I threw me and my girlfriend into a level 50 dungeon. Just the two of us, with about three minutes left. Uh, until the beta uh, beta was officially over and I was like yeah come on let's do it as a joke because I thought we weren't going to be able to do no do much but we clear we almost cleared it the boss the final boss was at about 25 percent life and, and it was ridiculous that I, I ended up leaving uh not sad because the beta ended but sad because I'm like this is the this is the dungeons? This is what the game's offering me? And it was just... It was annoying. Um, as I play a lot of MMOs. I've played about for 15 years, you know, various MMOs. And experienced various levels of content. And I gotta say, the content that's available in MapleStory 2 is simple, bland, and easy. Um... On top of that, the party finder in the game isn't good at all. It'll throw you into a dungeon with no party members if it doesn't find any, or it'll just, you know, make it won't give you a full party. Uh, the about 15 times I've used the party finder, not once did I get put into a dungeon with four people. I got put in uh, by myself. I got put in with just the party I was already with. I got put in with three people, but never four people. And that was an issue I had. Now, all that being said, that could all change. Because they have been asking for feedback, and the forums are filled with posts about take out the dungeon list. Uh, they're filled with posts about, you know, adding more challenge to the game. You know, there is a lot of feedback coming in that could lead to all this being changed. So don't let that opinion scare you away from the game when it first comes out. You know, it's a free-to-play game. You're not going to lose much by trying it. And on top of that, if you are going to let that opinion kind of sway you towards not experiencing it because it's it's still negative of the closed beta. Well, you know what? Let's hop into what I loved about the game. What kept me playing. What made me happy. Um, and you can see it on screen right now. The music performing in the game is phenomenally fun. There is so much to do. And it's so simple to do. All you need to do is go online. Download a MIDI file of like literally any song you want. And then using a few third-party programs, convert it into MML. And then put it into the game and you're good to go. It's so easy to do. And it's not hard to get awesome sounding songs that can literally cause people to stop what they're doing and just start dancing. There's so many impromptu concerts that me and Lydia set up. Uh, just for fun, we had that impromptu end of the uh, end of the server concert, and um, we ended up throwing that again uh, on a more popular channel. We went to channel I think four, because one through three the stage was taken. So we went to channel four, and we were throwing on the concert there, and people were loving it. Uh, for the video, we ended up going to a different one because we wanted uh, just to show off the music. We didn't we didn't want to have everyone else block in, stuff like that. And so, uh, you know, that was fun. We ended up going town to town as the wandering Moogle band and just playing songs. And we ha even had players tip us. We had players that opened up trade windows as we were playing and we're like, hey, here, uh, have, you know, some mesos because, you know, I really enjoyed watching you guys. That was cool. That was fun. And the fact that you can get experience from doing music performances or fishing or gathering and crafting and all that is really cool because it promotes, you know, 
a level of gameplay that for the more casual players. You know, for players that don't really care about dungeons and raiding, you know, they could become a musician, come on here just to do shows, make songs, sell songs, you know, make money, you know. They, that's, the, that's the two parts of the game. You have the adventuring part and you have the making money part. And, you know, the entrepreneurs in the world that hop onto the game, uh, there's many aspects for them to make the money. Uh, to, not real money, mesos. Uh, to make mesos in the game, and it's fun to do so. Um, so music performing, by far my favorite part of the game. Uh, then we get to the clothing design of the game, and how you can uh, design clothes, which is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty cool. Um, I say pretty cool because I, I tried my best and I couldn't really get anything to turn out. But you go on the forums and you start looking at people's characters and you start looking at some of the outfits they design and you go, holy crap. Like some people are really talented with this and they're making insane looking clothing. You know, you could basically be any anime character you can think of because someone out there has made their outfit. You, you don't know how many Kirito's I have seen when I was playing the game because people were just making his outfit and you know MMO game uh, he's gonna be uh, made in it in some way shape or form and people were running around with his basically his exact outfit and it was insane to see I've seen like you know a lot of cute characters a lot of cool looking characters you know the customization in the game is super in-depth into such a simple looking game it's you, did, you wouldn't think from the outside looking at it that it's in-depth customization. But it is, and it's cool that it's there. Then you go, you go into fishing. You know, fishing's not the f most fun. I've had um, more fun in fishing in the Archage beta, or alpha. You know, that was my best fishing experience, but it's not bad. You can sit there and you can fish by hand if you want. Um... Doing the little mini game when it pops up, or you know, fishing skills just high enough, you just catch the fish. Or you can just you know activate a fishing voucher or pay uh, the premium currency to auto fish for a certain amount of time. And hey, it works. It gets the job done. Um, my only complaint really with that is there's nothing to do with the fish. You kind of just catch them and then get experience and stuff based on the size. Uh, but you can get other items, you can get other um, rewards for fishing too, which is cool to see. Uh, and mostly though, it seems like the fishing is tied to the exploration go goals. You know, you have to fish uh, total fish out of places. You need to fish certain type of fish in certain places. Um, but in the end, out of all the bonus features offered in the game, the fish, fishing, I would say, is the worst. So fishing may be like the worst side activity in the game, but saying that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just the other ones are much better to do and much more fun. Uh, then you get to like the house design, and the way they do their housing system in the game is everyone has a house. Doesn't matter who you are, you start the game with a house. But if you want the house to be public, you then can buy a plot and that's actually really cool because everyone gets that house design um, itch scratched and if you are wealthy and lucky enough then you just get a public address and you know you still get something for your money uh, but you just you know everyone gets to have the best part of housing uh, and it's super in-depth again you can make giant houses like my house was so big in the beta big and empty but uh it was so big that Lydia would actually lag her computer when she came to look at it um which just goes to show you how big the house can be and you can be so so in depth with how you design it basically putting anything you can think of into practice in your house and it's really cool to see like the customization like i said of this game is insane 
then you know you have like the mini games like the one that was on right now they're fun little distractions that you know give you major rewards you get experience you get a ton of experience for doing them you get you know the coins for winning that let you spin the wheel that gets you other rewards you get mesos and they're fun um there's only one mini game i don't like and that's the ludum escape it's the vertical climbing one um that one to me is just annoying but even then it's still pretty fun it's an it's annoying it's but i could see it being fun is what i should say it wasn't fun for me but i could see it being fun to other people and i i'm sitting here right now and i don't even the game so has so much to offer that i don't even know if i covered everything uh i'm sitting here trying to think like okay did I, I said music i said fishing i said um you know mini games i didn't even talk about guild games i didn't talk about uh arcade games i didn't talk about uh gathering and crafting which you know probably i should talk about gathering and crafting really quick uh the gathering sy system in the game is pretty bare in the beta um there's only 13 levels so there's 13 nodes of both ev uh, ev everything um so like Mining, there's only 13 nodes you can go to, and gathering, there's only 13 nodes. Uh, so different types of things you can gather. When I say nodes, I mean different items you can gather. Um, then ranching, there's only 13 like animals, and farming is like 13 crops. But you know, it, it gets the job done. You know, you can gather from the uh, node a certain amount of times a day. After you gather that many times, you gotta wait for the daily reset, and then you can gather again. Um, they designed it that way probably to help deal with markets being just flooded. So again, it, it kind of brings in the design aspect. You, you know, they design it simply. So in order to design it simply, they need to put limits on it. Um, but you know, personally, I rather there be no limits, but. I can kind of see why there are. Um, so if you want to be the most optimum get gatherer you can be, you want to get you and your friends all together, gather everything you can, and then give it all the one person the craft so they can level up the craft in the fastest. And you know that's. I find that to be a problem. Again, it makes an optimum system in the game that leads to. Um, basically don't do content because it's not optimal optimal um crafting in the game crafts there is a, a crafting limit uh i wasn't it's very large it's a thousand so i'm not sure if it's a thousand per item or a thousand in general um i wasn't able to reach any of those um those limits as well as I couldn't see anything telling me how close I was to those limits. All it did was tell me hey, there's a thousand crafting limits. Um, so I wasn't sure if that meant like I could only craft a thousand at a time. They, they weren't super clear on the limit there. But, you know, got the job done. Um, there isn't too much ground break breaking stuff to craft. The only thing I really seen that I really would want to craft a lot of was the uh, 5,000 note 20 performance uh, music score. I looked through all the crafting and to me that right there seems to be the best thing to craft. Uh, but I say that as someone who loves music or love the music system in the game I should say. So yeah that pretty much covers everything I experienced in the beta and again I can't stress this enough the positive things I said in the about the beta could change you know they could make things more expensive so it's harder to do they could um you know put lock things behind cash shop items you know they could make it so you don't get musical instruments uh easy there's a tons of things they could do um and free to play games are scary to really get behind 
without knowing exactly what it's going to be when it comes out. Um, because there's tons of ways they could make money here. Uh, they could uh, keep the dungeon limit in, and then when the cash shop comes out, hey, you want to get more dungeon runs? Here's a 10 pack. You buy you buy this, it's $5.99, you get 10 more dungeons. You know, they, they could do stuff like that, and that would be really scummy, and it would be really, it would suck to see, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping it, it, they don't do it, and that's why I'm kind of saving my, my criticism for when the game actually comes out. Um, but on the other hand, all the negative things I have about the game, they could take the feedback that people have been saying and go, you know what, you're right, and fix it. They could redesign some of the fights. They could uh, start thinking of, you know, not only doing solo fights in the future. They could get rid of the dungeon limit. They could, you know, separate the dungeon limit. You know, you never know. There's tons of things that they could do, and only time will tell what they will do. Um, so until then, uh, I can't. I'm not going to really say much on the game. I do have my review already written up and ready to go, and if nothing changes when the game comes out, I'll publish the review just as is. Uh, if things do change, then I'll have to edit it. Um, but other than that, that's all I really have to say on the game. I hope you liked my rambling for a bit. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.